What are you wearing? It's an interesting question. Say may ask it to find someone in a crowded airport, make decisions on entire for a social outing, and say may ask it in another more intimate settings. So, uh, what are you wearing? But we won't get into that. We like to change the question up a bit. In the next few minutes, we like to ask what are we wearing? As Mississippi State University students, what are we wearing? Why are we wearing it? What social implications does our attire give about us? What compels us to get dressed in the morning the way that we do? What do brands have to do with it? What brands do we wear? Why? How do social, financial, political, intellectual, individual lives influence our attire? Why does it matter? Does it matter? You get the idea. Today we're going to talk about the tendencies and trends of Mississippi State students in regards to outward appearance and the social relevance of these trends. On my mama, mama, on my who, I look fly, yeah. I look good, good. touch my swag, Way. wish you cool, good. I look fly, yeah. I look good. There are many ways to classify Mississippi State University students into certain groups based on certain tendencies. People, if you want to be part of this group, you will dress as part here to get in. And we tend to dress like the people we're around. When classifying based on attire, there are a few undeniable groups. There are approximately 150 ROTC students that make up Air Force and Army ROTC programs on MSU's campus. Although not as populous or dominating as the Greeks, no pun intended, ROTC members can be spotted from a mile away. Wear jeans, polo shirt, button down, that type of thing. It's kind of laid back, loafer. They usually wear a t-shirt and jeans and either boots or tennis shoes. But why? Being in the Army ROTC program, we, I like to emphasize my functionality and jeans, specifically like cargo pants. I like to keep my important items with me, so yeah, functionality. Just depending on if I ride my bike or not. I like to present myself in a professional manner. So. You know, not to roll out of the bed and go to school, I like to I take time in my appearance. RC also has a strict dress code. Thursdays, they're required to wear their uniforms. It's a requirement that we wear our AC uniform, um, particularly because we conduct our labs on Thursdays. <laughs> 18% of the student population at Mississippi State are Greek. You know them, they're everywhere. You could probably visit sorority and fraternity row blindfolded and state what 90% of the inhabitants are wearing. Things like Nike shorts, oversized t-shirts, plastic sunglasses, leggings, high socks. But why? I just wear what's comfortable. Really, I just dress for comfort now. I wear jorts a lot. On Mississippi State campus, you dress for comfort. I never dress up for class. You're not here running for homecoming queen. They're non-binding. I don't like to be bound. Perhaps that's why the average sorority girl owns approximately eight pairs of Nike shorts. Mississippi State athletes are also easy to spot, even off the field. They don't need cleats or jerseys to be recognized, just a few key essentials. Sweatsuits. Adidas backpacks. Sweatshirts. High socks with Adidas. Gear. Gear. More gear. Uh, licensed gear. Issue gear. Mississippi State gear. But why? More alumni support our sport and the money allows us to buy more Mississippi State gear. We use more fabric because we're bigger. There are over 350 Mississippi State students athletes on campus. Just look for the Adidas logo and you'll know. Come together. So we tried to calculate the number of hipsters on MSU campus, but it's an obscure number, so you've probably never heard of it. You've seen them. Ray-Bans, skinny jeans, high top boots, plaid, scarves, vintage, braids. Hipsters are a unique and relatively new breed that comes in all shapes and sizes. They are mostly concerned with avoiding the mainstream, although avoiding the mainstream has become so mainstream that many are starting to embrace the mainstream in order to avoid becoming mainstream. We really wanted to find a hipster for this documentary to interview and get their input, but we had a hard time. Wait a minute, there's one now. Wait, come back. Warning, hipsters should never be called hipsters in the presence of a hipster. They're a unique and delicately non-existing but overly present being. Their existence is deniably undeniable. If you encounter a hipster and do not understand what the hipster is saying, it's not your fault, nor is it the hipsters, nor anyone's for that matter. It's everyone's fault. We all know this guy, the overachiever. Always walk around like he's dressed for success, mostly because he is. Suits, ties, dress suits, heels, college shirts. Regardless of whether they just rolled out of bed or have been begging for handshakes in the union for 12 hours, 
The river achievers perhaps the most easily recognized trend. They represent a small portion of the student population, but an important one nonetheless. Obviously, these groups do not represent every individual student at Mississippi State University. This is simply an umbrella attempt to observe some of the major trending phenomena on campus. There are hundreds of ways to classify an individual, ways that we practice every day. However, for the purpose of this documentary, we will be working with and observing the previously mentioned groups and their general social tendencies. There are a number of things in a group you can break down for purposes of understanding groupness. Uh, one of them would be norms. Mm -hmm. standards, codes, rules, regulations, ought. And if you want to be part of that group, you accept those norms. And oftentimes you accept them without even thinking. You are socialized. But our appearance is not simply a means for classifying or identifying people around campus. It is human nature to classify and categorize everything. But what is the social relevance of these classifications? What do they say about us? A lot of the way you dress has to do with respect. A long time ago in the 80s when Aretha Franklin spelled out that word. That a lot of the way you dress says the way you feel about yourself, the way you feel about your subject matter, the way you feel about the people that you're in front of. It's a sign of respect. There are many social elements that affect the way we dress. One of the more interesting and flexible elements is current events. Current events affect our attire, from homecoming elections to presidential elections. The events in our social, political, and everyday lives have an influence on the way we dress. The most prominent example of the Hmong students at Mississippi State appears to take place through the method of stating one's views on their t-shirt. I have a lot of t-shirts. T-shirt. An oversized t-shirt. I'm in a sorority, therefore I have lots of t-shirts. are also prominently demonstrating through the t-shirt social media reaches into what we wear. For example, hashtag Hail State can be found on Twitter, t-shirts, and even reaches as far as head football coach Dan Mullen's shirt sleeve. Many students demonstrate their social or political beliefs through their attire as a response to current events in social media. A third social element that has a large effect on our attire is group or organizational affiliation. If one's attire does not already say enough about an individual, they may go as far as to state direct affiliation with an organization or group of people. Classifying made easy. There are over 300 student organizations on Mississippi State campus, and we found that this attire can be either exclusive. If I seen another guy walking around with the issue with Mississippi State football gear on that wasn't one of my teammates, sometimes it can rub me the wrong way. So why does he have on our stuff? If I see somebody in uniform who doesn't take pride in their appearance, it irritates me to the fact that they're not a professional, and that's what a military is, this professional organization. If I seen a girl walking around with industry football gear on, maybe perpetrating or something like that. Or worn as a sign of support for the organization. I'm excited and happy that other people are supporting our program by wearing those t-shirts. If they're not in the RTC and I see them in a t-shirt, it kind of makes it feel a little bit more profitable because they're making that first step towards making a decision to go into the RTC and into the Army. I look good. I look good. In addition to current events, social media, and organizational affiliation, attire can be influenced by a need or desire for advertisement. Posters, flyers, handouts, etc. usually buried in the clusters of other posters, flyers, handouts. They rarely get seen. However, it's hard to ignore the bold lettered message on the back of the shirt of the person sitting in front of you in class for an hour. Advertising through attire is a popular means of getting the word out about events, organizations, or promotions on campus. Perhaps this is why the average MSU student owns around 39 t-shirts. When you look at a person, they're wearing a t-shirt. It says, notice me. Make me feel good about who I am. Affirm my existence. Put on for my city, on, on for my city. In spite of all of this, there is one relentless trend that transcends all groups or affiliations at Mississippi State. Oh, it's Friday. We have to wear maroon. It's almost like a rule. No matter your style or tendencies, everyone looks good in maroon. Hipsters make it cool, but not too cool. Greeks make it comfortable, and overachievers make it professional. Maroon Friday is a social phenomenon that only reaches beyond the boundaries of the previously mentioned groups, but also reaches beyond the boundaries of Mississippi State campus. If you're connected with the university, whether you're actually in Starkville or not, you wear maroon on Fridays. And it's part of supporting the university. All around the world, people from all walks of life are brought together on Maroon Friday. I look cool. I look cool. Mississippi State is very relaxed, very accepting. It's such a comfortable environment for people. 
we are very diverse as far as the types of people we have. I see it right now when I'm wearing cowboy boots. You come as you are and you'll be accepted. You don't have to raise or lower yourself. I think generally on our campus we're pretty well accepting of everybody. You can be what you want to be. Casual. They're not muddy, old, nasty, pasture cowboy boots. I don't judge you. For heaven's sake, you don't judge me. We are the people's university. Mississippi State, you are what you are. I am what I am, Pop, I said. Well, lots of people wear cowboy boots. And people accept that. That's why it's just so nice. No, it sounds like an infomercial, but I think it's true. I look good. I look good. Regardless of your tendency, your group, your affiliation, your social and political beliefs, your financial or social status, your major, your hometown, etc., your attire obtains some form of social relevance. Why do you dress the way you do? Individual taste. How you've been socialized. It's your culture. Different occasions. The background that you were raised in. Have enough money in your pocket. Other people's view of what's acceptable or unacceptable. What you wear does not define you. It does not decide your action or purpose for the day. It does not leave you a new perspective on life. However, who you are very well defines what you wear. So the appearance, what you cover yourself with, what it says, how you arrange it, is really a nice sense of saying who you are. All of the elements that contribute to us as individuals make up our attire. Perhaps the most influential being that we are Mississippi State University students.